yes, everybody knows I love the Japanese culture, Japanese songs, Japanese music, Japanese food. And I'm also madly in love with uh, Rurumi Kenshin, <laughs> Samurai X. Unfortunately, he is a banga. Or maybe that's a fortunate thing. Otherwise, I will, end, I will dedicate my entire life <laughs> trying to hunt him down. But this post is not about him. It's actually about a piece of clothing that I'm so in love with. A tradition, traditional Japanese piece of clothing that I'm so in love with, which is the kimono. I started collecting them when I started working, I think. And so whenever I have friends going to Japan or whenever I have a Japanese friend coming over visiting me, I would always ask them to buy a kimono. And many of my Japanese friends would actually be confused as to why <laughs> they're like, why do you want to buy a kimono? <laughs> but I would show them my collection and imagine my surprise. But maybe about five years ago, one of my friends, Japanese friends here actually told me, oh, that's not a kimono, it's a yukata. <laughs> it's just, oh my God, this entire time I was actually calling it with, by the wrong name. It's actually related. The yukata and the kimonos are related. The kimono, uh, they're related, but sort of different the, the kimono is the whole nine yards you know the traditional clothing that you see the, the japanese wear but the yukata is an evolution of the the kimono they use they it was it started during the edo period when people would go to bath houses whenever they would want to take a bath so the walk from at first they would wear simple pieces of clothing so it's usually just cotton with no design and stuff they would walk because it, ha they, it has to get wet because they're going to take a bath. So they would walk from their house to the bathhouse wearing, wearing the, the yukata. Eventually, people realized, well, I want to look good even if I'm going to go to go take a bath, they still want to look good. So they started designing the yukata and then eventually, it, it uh, they modernized the yukata and we, this the jacket, actually the jacket, that's what I'm, that's a, it's actually a bathrobe. So, um, but I just wanted to share a little something about the, the kimono. Mm, this is, you know, in the beginning I was wearing it because it looks good. It's really for, for styling, it's really for fashion. And uh, I asked some of my friends if they were offended by that. And they, all of them said, although I'm not claiming that this represents the entire of Japan, but many of them are very generous of their culture and they're like, no, go ahead, wear it if you want. But just, you know, just make sure that you're not disrespecting it. And as far as I know, I never disrespected it. But eventually I grew up, I matured, I realized that I do know, I need to know a little something, at least a little something about the, the kimono because I, I'm wearing it and it's not mine and I don't want to do anything that will offend them. And so I studied a little bit and then I asked the, my Japanese friends for some of the details. So I'm going to share with you what I know or some of what I know, but I am not an expert. If there's anybody out there who's an expert or knows more and would like to share, please do so. So the kimono apparently started in the Heian period. Um, if you want to be strict about it, it started in the 3rd century when there was this, this book or this document by the Chinese and they said that they, they, they called the, the clothing of the Japanese men as the kanfui and then kantoi for women. The, the kanfui, it was on their shoulder and then it wrapped around their bodies for the men and then for women it was actually a sleeveless piece of clothing and then during the Heian, the Heian period is when the kimono's ancestors so, so quote unquote was born but at that time they called it the kosode so they they this is where the first conflict started i read somewhere that during the heian period the sleeves actually became bigger so um the, you know how the the kimonos or the yukatas would have big sleeves but another um, literature that I've read and another fr friend told me that it, the sleeves actually became wider during the Edo period. So I don't know which one's correct. If you know which one's correct, let me know. Um, okay, so they, they, they started putting together, that started, the kosode started, because they started putting together garments and they designed it in a way that would fit different body types. And so that's why it's a straight cut, as you know, and it's very loose. The, the kosode is the inner layer, the very, very first layer. And then they would put pieces over it. 
but so but because the samurais were all about utility over fashion they decided to take away the the layers and just use the kosobi as their everyday everyday wear but the women would still be wearing the the different layers on it now it during the edo period it was actually the warriors that dominated the society so they were sort of considered the nobility but economically the merchants were actually the the more powerful ones so during that time um there were three elements that sort of influenced became the greatest influence in the development of the dokosode or the kimono as we know it today one is the the garment or the fabric the pattern used and the different designs so the it influenced how how women and their social class would wear and design would design and wear their own kimono or kosode now in japan they said that there were two very important concepts which is the omote and the ura the omote is the public side and then the ura is the, the private side and so the men belong to the public side or the omote and then the women belong to the private side so the clothing of men at that time were more comfortable uh, supposed to women there were more layers more complicated when the four social classes however became equal everyone was just wearing the kimono and so that was that's the very first signif that's this is one of the many significant the, uh, the many of the things that the kimono stands for the the japanese it unified them because everyone was just wearing the kimono it was also during this period they were also still a um, very much japanese the culture is very very pure there weren't a lot of western influences so yeah so it was like a, the, the kimono became a unifying thing it binds everybody because everyone was just wearing the same style now like you know most societies during the edo period it was stratified so since everybody was really wearing the kosode <laughs> so the fabric the texture the color the technique of how it was done and what's printed on them so texture and 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 artwork it they were all used in order to represent the person wearing the kimono or the kosode so the garment is more than just a piece of clothing or a piece of style it's like an id like a like an identifying mark like it's a part of your identity um the of course the the nobility the ones in in the upper class since they had the money their clothing were nicer so the the fabrics were also nicer and there were a lot of things that they can do with that so if you're a woman you can actually use the the cherry blossoms as a design and then you know depending on your your class your your living like if you're a poet or or you're a warrior or whatever you can incorporate all of that in what you're wearing um as opposed to the um, the lower classes since they didn't really have a lot of money they would wear their kimono until they can't wear it anymore so they will wear it down until they won't be able to use it anymore and so from a unifying element the same garment was used to to identify the person wearing it and so that is those are two of the reasons that the kimono stands for is a very important um, element a very important thing in the history and the culture of the japanese so there's a lot more to it that's just oversimplifying it but as i've said this is just to share just to start hopefully just to start a conversation um around the kimono and then if there's anybody who wants to share more about the kimono in the yukata please do so but yeah um i would like if you want any recommendations on some of the best yukata designers uh, or brands in japan let me know i recommend but that's it thank you